Hey, Mike, you want to see something scary? You want to see something scary? This is scary. How did you get in my house? Well, I mean, why? Yeah, sure. I'll sh show me something scary. Show me something scary. How scary is it? It's real scary. It's real scary. Hang on. I'll show you. I'll show you. It's scary. It scared me. It scared me bad. I want you to get out now. Yeah, take all your stuff. Why do you have a bag? Just get, get out, get out. I do know that I said yesterday that I probably was not gonna shoot another video today because it's my daughter's birthday, but the fact is, the stuff that I had planned did not pan out. I had a customer that was coming, can't make it. Um, I really don't have anything to work on except the straight razor and my stones are soaking, and I already told that customer that's not gonna happen today because it's just gonna, it's, it's just gonna be too much that's uh, gonna take all day for those stones to soak. So they're just not gonna happen today. I'll do them first thing tomorrow. So, Instead of that, what I decided we'd do is, I told you guys I was gonna shoot this video a while back. Um, this is things that, you know, I already did the maintaining your knives, your kitchen knives, sharpening kitchen knives, and things that you can use for, like uh, we talked about the ceramic rod and things like that. Now, we're gonna talk about things that people do, that I've seen people do, that I've seen <laughs> professional chefs on TV do, that are going to be bad for your edge and not make that edge last as long. So what I'm gonna talk about now are things that you shouldn't do with your kitchen knives, things to prevent uh, more rapid loss of your edge. So, okay, so the first, very, very first thing we're gonna talk about is the, it kinda goes back to the last video, is how you're maintaining your knives. If you are using one of these, you're doing yourself no favors. This is that steel that I talked about that I said you're much better off to use, as mine is right next to it, a ceramic rod. So ceramic rod is going to give you a much better length of, because you're actually sharpening. You're not just rubbing that down a, a piece of metal that is really not doing what you want it to do. Now. This sets beside because it does not fit in any of my butcher blocks. So that's the first thing, is if you've got one of these, replace it with a ceramic one. I just happen to have a ceramic rod that came with the Edge Pro that I used to use as a sharpening system. Well, I didn't actually use to use it. I got it, didn't like the actual system, fell in love with the stones, and continued to use the stones. So Rocky says, don't use that, use this. Actually, this is Rambo. I got it, it came in. This is the, the Rambo mugshot shirt. So, this is what I would recommend using, a, a ceramic rod. Now, they, like I said, they make these this size in ceramic. So that would be the first thing. So that's number one. Number two. Number two, real simple. This is a cutting board. You cut on it. That's a granite table. This is a fake, whatever countertop you want to cut. But it's significantly harder. I have cut on this accidentally, and it will damage your edge. This is one of those plastic, soft, cheap, soft cutting boards. And then they do eventually wear out, and you gotta watch for, you know, am I getting material in it? Am I cutting into it? They, they wear over time. But this is a cutting board, a granite, or ceramic or quartz countertop is not a cutting board. So the big thing is your choice of cutting board. Bamboo is a little harder than I would want. Um, some of the wood cutting boards have got a really hard epoxy-like coating on the outside. That's not what I would want. I personally like these, these cheap plastic 
uh, I think these are polystyrene, uh, compressed polystyrene. The, it's the, basically, it's the PETF. It's the same thing as in your milk jugs is what it is actually, and it's compressed down. That's what it is. It's the, the high dense, the, the same material that's in your milk jug, just compressed down. Those are great. So now the other thing with your cutting board, this is a cutting board. When you chop on it, let's say, let's turn this around and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I wanna turn this so that we're not hiding one of the elements, but I'll turn this around. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you from above. So. One of the other horrible, this is my wife's kitchen. I'm gonna use it because it needs sharpened anyway, so I may as well show you. One of the things that you see people do is as they're cutting, they chop up their stuff and then they go over to their pan and you see them take this and they use the edge and they slide it down the board to scrape it down. You, for all intents and purposes, have damaged that edge. You've probably rolled it over. You've probably caused some nicks. The reason this needs sharpened is you can see there's some little nicks and stuff. You can see where I've drug it. One, Two reasons. You, you don't want that powder from that cutting board in your food. But you can see that that edge has got some inconclusions on it and stuff now. Use the spine of the blade if you're going to scrape stuff into a, a pot and things like that with your knife. Scraping your knife this way is basically flattening that off. I don't care how soft this material is, this plastic will flatten that edge off because it's so thin and so, let's see, yep, all down through there, little microchips. Dragging your knife down your cutting board to slide the stuff in. If you're gonna do it, do it this way. If you lay your knife down, just use your hand and scrape it in. It's that easy. So, that's another great big thing that people do. The next big thing. When you're done with your kitchen knife, this doesn't get tossed in the sink. You, well, they do, and that's one of the other things that happens. I can't tell you how many times I've walked in and I see this very knife, this nice little, it's not a super expensive knife, but it is a fairly nice little kitchen, medium-sized paring knife. So it's, it's about the same, it's a paring knife that is about the same size as a boning knife. Just a little bit different shape. So this is a medium size. this is, I would consider this a large paring knife um, as compared to a small paring knife. Large and small, right? This knife gets found in the sink. It gets found in the strainer. When you're done with your knife, you're done with your knife, you wipe it off, you look and make sure it's clean, you put it under this tap, you wash it with a little bit of soap and water. If it's a carbon steel knife, you might want to put a drop of oil on it and you put it back in the butcher block. The worst thing for the edge of your knife is to being tossed in the sink, been put in a strainer with other silverware and stuff. Plus, that can be dangerous because some people will put it in because it doesn't want to sit. I can tell you right now, my wife put some steak knives in the kitchen strainer that were sticking up like this, and I stabbed myself in the thumb. It's just a dangerous all around. You leave it in the sink. This is a sharp object. Somebody reaches into the sink. It's all around a bad idea just to touch a, touch a sharp kitchen knife into a sink and let it sit where you're going to be putting ceramic plates and stuff. It's really bad for the edge. So that is... The third thing that people do is just not maintain it. They, they might do all the other stuff right, and then when they get ready to clean the knife, they just toss it in the sink with the rest of the stuff. Your knife should immediately be wiped off and put right back where it came from for, for like I said, the, the sake of your edge and to the safety of anyone else that might be in the kitchen. So, let's move on. This next one is for folks that have the high carbon steel kitchen knives. These are some kitchen knives that were kits that my father made and put handles on. And as you can see, there's a good bit of rust and stuff on. I did resharpen them, but these are butcher knives that are your high carbon steel butcher knives. This is an old hickory. This is an, a nice old hickory. Uh, this is going to replace one of my crappy knives in my workbench. This is another one of my father's old butcher knives that we used for butchering deer, cattle, whatever. Now, these knives have got two specific things you gotta watch out for. Wood handles and the blade being high carbon steel. This is another one that you want to keep as far away from water as possible. It's not something you toss in the sink as well because you can actually corrode your edge to the point where you lose your edge due to rust. So these ones require specific 
you got to be careful make sure they stay oiled and they don't go in the sink with a bunch of water they get wiped off um, and, and taken care of that way so that is specific to these that goes along with the last one I was talking about being in the sink and stuff like that this one actually has been soaked in water enough times when it shouldn't have been that the handle is cracking and I'm gonna have to replace the handle on this I'm probably gonna do it at Matt's house uh, he's got a little shop in his garage but that's something that is specific to carbon steel knives that they will rust on the edge and you get that oxidation and then you get pitting and, and, and things along your edge where it doesn't cut like it's supposed to. These are gonna get cleaned up and oiled. So that is for high carbon steel knives. These actually have sheaths for them because they were ones that we would take and go out to if we were butchering in the field. Hawks, we have hawks out here now. I love it. I love it because they run away the crows. So there's that piece. So, and if you guys are wondering, I'm doing the breaks because I'm, I'm planning on doing transitions in between each specific item that I see people do. So there is that, water and in the sink. They, they go hand in hand, but they are two separate items because they're two separate stainless steel knives and carbon steel knives. So, to the last point, and this is one that people just don't ever think about. It's one of the things they don't ever think about. Uh, you know, we, we talk about put them in a drawer and they get knocked around. I've seen people put kitchen knives in a drawer. We talked about stuff being in the sink strainer, in, in, the, in, the, in the dishes strainer, where knives and forks and stuff can be stuck in. It's the safety issue of being in the sink outside of the edge. But this last one is one that a lot of people don't think about. And I do know because it's the same way that you store a Japanese sword. Now, I have two separate butcher blocks. So we're going to turn this around for the final point of what people are doing wrong with their kitchen knives that cause them to have to be sharpened too often. Let me turn this back. The final thing is storage. How you store your knives in your butcher block. Now you're like, how could that, that's what the butcher block's for, is to protect my knives and keep them from banging into stuff and having them in a the drawer. So what am I doing wrong with storage? So now this cut is just gonna be a simple, straight, no pause, straight to what I'm gonna show you about these two very different butcher blocks. One's very old and one's fairly new. Now I'm trying to get a very good view of these for you so you can see. This is the newer, more expensive butcher block that we have. And there's knives in here that don't belong to this set. This is a set of knives that this butcher block was left to me by a friend when he passed away. Uh, their kitchen, the rest of the knives for it are in a cupboard over there somewhere. But there are knives in here that came from that set, such as the Santoku, the bread knife we've got here, the fillet knife. This is one of my pairing knives. It's actually a Ginsu. It's a Ginsu, and this is actually a really nice, a really, really nice pairing knife. The only problem is it came with a bent tip. Uh, this was part of the set that he gave me, but it is a very nice little pairing knife. But can you spot the difference? These knives do not sit with their blades down. So if you were to look, we're gonna zoom in on this. This is an old kitchen block. I've had this, I had this kitchen block bef well before the wife and I ever got married. As a matter of fact, this set of knives that you see here, this one, two, three knives were part of that set and then some of the others just broke and fell apart. Boning knife, the, uh, the serving knife, there's a fork that came with the set and this kitchen knife right here that my wife liked. This knife, goes in and when you pull it out let's zoom in let's see if we can zoom in and see exactly what I'm talking about can you see the wear right here as that knife has been drug out because before I really thought about it I used to do this a lot this knife sits in and then it drags out and you're dragging your knife on that wood every time it's as simple as putting the knife in upside down and when you draw it yes it's touching but when you draw it out the base is what's gonna drag so I keep all of our knives in this block upside down, just like you would store a Japanese sword. So I say that because Japanese swords are stored so that the scabbard going this way, the blade is sitting at the fore and back end. And when you draw, if it's sitting, it's not putting pressure on the edge down onto the wood scabbard. So treating it just like I would treat a, a high-end piece of cutlery, it might not be super expensive, but it's still a very nice piece of cutlery I would like it to last. So that is the thing that gets overlooked a lot. Like, hey, I'm doing all the stuff here I said, but my edges are not staying. Well, they're not lasting. Well, it could be 
that your butcher block just needs to maybe rotate it so that it sits this way. This one is meant to sit that way, and these two sit together. This one sits like this, and then this one sits flipped upside down on top of it at the same angle. Because we got a lot of kitchen knives. As a matter of fact, there's an entire, I'll show you, there's an entire another kitchen block full of knives right there. Just in case. Just in case we, there's a whole set of steak knives there and stuff like that. So those are just the things that I see. I see it on TV shows that I see chefs doing. I see it at professional kitchens because I have customers that are chefs, uh, professional chefs. I'm drinking an energy drink out of a glass because I actually had a video get taken down because uh, I was not authorized to have their logo in my video. Uh, I got a notification a week ago, so I'm going to be real careful about what I put in videos. This is part of my energy. This is the last of my energy drink I'm drinking. Um, the can is in the sink because I knew I was shooting a video, so I don't want to get videos taken. I can't even can't even get that video back. It's gone forever. Thank you, Coca Cola Group, for being so strict. At any rate, those are the things that could be causing problems. Don't cut on hard surfaces. That, that's, that's another one. When we talk about cutting board, this is just a, a little last caveat. Um, not to throw my mother under the bus, but I came into the living room. My, my mother was sitting at the coffee table. She was eating some leftover steak, and it was in a glass bowl that she warmed up in, and she was cutting it up with this. Now... Granted, it's fine. It's not that big a deal. However, I'm just making an example. She just came down the steps. She hears me talking bad about her in a video. Uh, <laughs> I'm not talking bad about her. I'm just using an example. You have steak knives, and they're usually the cheapest knives that are in your set. These knives, we haven't used yet. These are fairly nice steak knives. This is a set of Chicago cutlery. These are fairly nice steak knives but they are still the cheapest ones in the set. Like to replace these, way cheaper than to say, replace a $180 Santoku or a $160 chef knife or a $60 uh, Japanese style paring knife. Do you see what I'm saying? Those things are meant for that. These are the ones that like, a lot of them are straighted. These are not, these are the ones that I would be a lot more careful with, but you know, you're just cutting steak on a, on a plate. These are the ones that are your sacrificial lambs. These are the ones that you just give up and they're dead and you're like, okay, I'll just buy another set of steak knives. Steak knives are the ones that you use for that. So when you're serving, if you have really nice knives like this that are, you don't have steak knives, try to pick the things, you know, maybe serve, uh, there's other ways to do it. You know, the wood planks that you serve stuff on, maybe like the little cutting boards, you can serve on those. Um, if not, get yourself a cheap set of steak knives that you use for those purposes and these can just be like I said, you're a little sacrificial. I don't give a crap. You're, you're cannon fodder of the knife set. So, I actually do have a really nice steak knife. And guess what brand it is? It's a cold steel kitchen knife. Really nice steak knife. I love this. Uh, this is my steak knife when we eat steak. This is the one I use. Um, but still, it's one of those sacrificial ones. And these need washed because they're right above the stove and they're sticky. So, like I said, guys, those are the things that if you just... In practice, yes, there's two draw-through cutters that came with the sets, and I keep them there for examples and showing people why not to use them. Um, these are just things that you see people do that are going to detract from the longevity and length of life expectancy of the edge of their knives. And it's just little things that if you just practice them over time, they just become second nature, like putting the knives in the block, in the block upside down. So that when you're drawing the knife out of the block, you're not dragging it across the wood and dulling it. Because there are silicates and stuff in wood. Uh, you can strop on wood. There's enough silicates and stuff in there that cutting through the wood will dull the knife. You are, everybody knows this. As you cut, if you carve wood, your knife gets dull. Same thing. You're doing that every time you pull a knife out. So, guys, that's it. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. But tell me why, please. I can't fix things. If it's just that you don't like me, well, I can't fix that. Go somewhere else. In this corner is going to be a video that YouTube thinks you like. Actually, you know what? This is going to be a link to my last video that I just put up. Um, down here will be a link to my daughter's skating channel. That's what's going to be down there this time. Up here will be a link to subscribe, a subscription link. So if you guys are not subscribed, you can subscribe. 
Uh, if you're doing it on a computer, there's different levels. Uh, you can get some notifications, you can get all notifications, or you can be silent. Uh, just determine how much you want. I've done, this is the third video in two days. So just an idea of how much stuff comes up. If you don't want to get all notifications, then, then you might want to get some. And down here will be a link to the Patreon, which, as I've said in other videos, is how we're going to subsidize trips to go places to get videos at, say, Tim Reeve, or Chris Reeve Knives and hang out with Tim and Matt, uh, Matt Fabie. Maybe go to uh, up to Northern California, middle uh, Central California, actually, Bay Area, uh, and hang out with Mattia Barani and Mark Begg if I can set that up. Things like that, I can't subsidize on my own. That's the whole point of the Patreon. Things like that, that's what bought the ring light that I'm currently not using because the light just happens to be really good right now. So all those things, that's what the Patreon's for. Guys, it's my baby girl's birthday. This video probably will be up sometime today if I can get the editing done. There's a video that's going up at noon today, so you probably already have seen that. Um, if you like her skating, I will have a link to the GoFundMe down, down below that supports her skating. And then I will definitely make sure that you guys are informed. Fox 5 Sports in San Diego is going to do a story on the news about my daughter, and I will make sure that I get that somehow linked so that you guys can watch that. Guys, I love you all. Have a good week. Uh, watch out for an Instagram post about the, the fall special for knives, for sharpening, and I will probably do a video just strictly about that sometime this week. I love you all. Take it easy. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.